Hello everyone, Harry here. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. So in my last video, I, I talked about how I'm now using um, Harrison's Mix Bus to finish off my mix. I know there's a lot of people that do um, do their mix in different DAW or do different elements of their project in a different DAW, um, and I just thought it'd be quite handy for me to go through the processes to, to render your stems out of Reaper so that you can then drag it into somewhere else. So here we are, we're in Reaper. Um, this is a project I've been working on. I said in the last video what I like to do is basically get the song completely prepared. I, I like to do a semi-mix in Reaper so that when I drag it into Mixbus I've got an awful lot less work to do. I don't know whether it's the way everyone else does it, but I tend to kind of mix the song as I'm going along. So when I record the bass, I will then process the bass, go through, do all of the EQs, put all the processing on it that I want. Same with the guitars, same with vocals, same with everything else. I kind of do it as it goes in so that I don't have quite as much to do at this point. Um, I'll just show you. So yeah, everything's mixed, everything's EQ'd, it's got all of the effects and everything else on it that you'd want. So really, essentially, this is pretty much a 90% mixed song. Sounds alright, sounds pretty good. But I want to take this out of here, I want to put it into Mix Bus, I want to do another mix of it and finish it off and push it over the line. So. The first thing to do, and I always forget to do this, which is why I'm making sure that I tell you guys that you need to do it, <laughs> as a kind of subtle reminder to myself, is go through and centre everything and turn the width to zero. If you render stems with stuff already panned, you're going to end up with stereo tracks with stuff only on one channel. Now, this might not be a problem because I know, for example, that my guitar left is going to be guitar left in Mixbus regardless of what I do but it's nice to have the mono track and then the the opportunity for me to do that at that, that time. Because it might be I get in there and I decide that the width is just a little bit too much and I'm having a few phase issues, in which case if I've got a complete control of it as a mono track, I can bring that in later on in the game. So I'm gonna go through and center all of this, get rid of the widths, make it all zero, get rid of any panning that's on there and just make everything completely mono and boring. Right, they're all centred and zeroed, so the next thing we want to do is consolidate the project, tidy it up a bit. I've been working on this for weeks and I know certainly the way I work, probably the way a lot of other people work as well, is I'm absolutely shit awful for naming things properly, giving things colours, gluing the stuff as I'm going along and making it neat and tidy. Um, this project is basically a very good indication of just what the inside of my brain looks like. I just kind of chuck stuff at the screen and just keep on putting tracks in and just keep on recording stuff. Um, and then I tend to deal with it later on, so this is the time when I'm going to have to deal with it. All of the tracks that are muted, all of the buses, we don't need any of those. Um, these are just things that I've put in to help me with the writing process so I can control things a little bit easier. Um, but for this next step, we don't need any of those. So, Control shift m little keyboard shortcut. We're going to go through and we're going to get rid of the Arrange panel of everything we don't need going forward. So as I say, we don't need buses, we don't need anything um, that's got additional processing. We don't need anything that isn't a stem, basically. Um, all we need is the raw audio. So I know that we don't need any of these, so we can go through and turn all of these off. There are my vocals, so I need all of those. That's everything that we need. The next thing we want to do is make sure everything's got proper names. This is going to help you massively. Um, so I know what all of these are, so I'm just going to dash through and name them properly. Right, so I've gone through, I've named all of those, they all make sense to me, I know exactly what they are. The next step is to render these into the stems that we're going to use. So, we're going to highlight all of these, because as we did before, we've gone through, we've got rid of anything off here that we didn't need, so we're not going to get unnecessary stems. We've gone through, we've named them all, everything's centred, everything's zero width. So, we're ready to go. So, we're going to go render, we're going to select stems, selected tracks, obviously we've selected all of these. Let's make a folder for them. What we want to do for title is we obviously want it to take the name from the tracks, from the tracks here, not from anything else. So if you go on wildcards, we can then go project information and we can go dollar track. That will then, if you look at the file names, it will save it intro drums, drums, midi bass, bass, guitar, guitar. Then when we've got all the stems, we know exactly what we're dealing with. What I also like to do at this point is to go back into wildcards, project information, and I like to put the tempo on. 
This is important because when we drag them into the the next DAW, whichever one you're going into, or if you're sending these to a mix engineer, they can find the tempo and line it up to their grid. It's not something that's necessarily the most important, but if you're doing little edits or cutting silences out and stuff, it's just easy to be able to edit it to a grid rather than having to do it freehand. We press render. And we wait. Right, so that's all done, they're all rendered. Let's just go into our files and just make sure that it's all exactly where we think it is. And there you go. Those WAV files are what you need. So we've got the name of the track and we've got the tempo and that's it. So if you were sending them off to a mixing engineer or anything like that, you can then just send those files, all of them will start at the same time, they'll end at the same time, they'll all line up perfectly and it just saves any pissing about on their end or on your end if you're dragging it into another door. So that's it really for this video, I just wanted to show that export process and the way that you go about it in Reaper. Um, I'll be doing another video about the next step and dragging it into another door and then probably do a full mix video and mix plus of this track as well. So thank you very much for joining me, as always stay safe, look after yourselves, make lots of music and I'll see you very soon. Bye bye.